Hi lovely humans, today I'm going to show you how to make a super simple skirt block. This video is intended for people with some sewing knowledge, so hopefully you know what a block is. For those of you who don't, it is the basic blueprint shape that you need to then create patterns. Um, it should fit the body with a little bit of ease, which is wiggle room, um, and there's no design in it. So once you've made your block into a calico toile, it will look something like this. It's literally a front piece, a back piece, you've got darts in the waist, side seams, centre back seam, and then two back darts. From this, you can then create all kinds of different patterns and shapes. So I'm gonna show you step by step how to make your very own skirt block. All you need is six measurements. The waist measurement, which is the narrowest part of the body, it's where you bend, it's where the bottom of your ribs are. You need your top hip, which is roughly where the bones are, your hip bones. So that's about 10 centimetres down from the waist, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, depending on your torso length. And then you need your full hip measurement. So that is the widest part of your body. It might be where the middle of your bum is, it might be where your hips are, it might be where your thighs are, everybody's different. So there are your three circumference measurements, and then you need three length measurements, which are the waist to top hip, so that is where your waist is down to the hip bone. Then you need your waist to full hip, which is where you, from your waist down to where your fullest part is. And then you need a skirt length measurement. So I've chosen to do 65 centimetres for this block because this is quite a big mannequin, it's quite tall. Um, but you can do whatever length, it kind of, knee length ranges anywhere between about 55 and 65. So once you've got those six measurements, there are then a couple of calculations. Um, that you'll have to do. I explain those in the video and I've tried to simplify it as much as possible. I know that block making is a little bit intimidating for some people because, you know, traditionally it's really complicated, there's loads of maths, so I've tried to create a technique that removes as much maths as possible so that it's more intuitive and a little bit easier, hopefully. I've also created a free instruction booklet which you can request by clicking the link in the comments below the video. This goes step by step through everything that we cover in the video and gives you some tips on creating curves and things like that as well. So that's absolutely free and you can request it below. I hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you at the end. Okay, so let's get started on making our super simple skirt block. I'm going to write on my paper so that you can follow with me which is the length and which is the width of my block. So along this edge we've got the length. And across the top here, we have got the width. As we go, I'm going to need to turn the paper around so that I can access it better, but also so that you can see whilst I'm filming. Um, so by writing these two, you'll know which is which um, and hopefully won't get too confused. OK, so the first thing we want to do is draw our length line. So this will represent the centre back. If you've got spot and cross, you can use the spots um, and the crosses to keep your line straight. And you can use that as, a, as an aid when you're doing your right angles as well. If you don't, it's no worries. You just have to be super careful when it comes to doing your right angled lines. So now you've got your length line. We're going to right angle a line off that one towards the top of the paper. So you can label this junction point zero. We're starting with the length line. Zero to one needs to be the length of your skirt. I want my length to be 65. So I'm gonna measure 65. I would recommend using a tape measure rather than a ruler to measure for your block, uh, purely because you can measure around curves a lot easier than you can with a ruler and a lot more accurately. Also, when you're measuring with something, I like it's a, it's a really good idea to stick to the same measuring implement because I don't know if you've ever put two tape measures next to each other or a tape measure next to a ruler. Sometimes they say really, really different things. So keep the same measuring tool for the whole process. We've got the length measurement here. You can label this point 0.1. Then we come back to our width. So zero to two is half your hip plus 1.5. That's your fullest hip measurement. So I'm using a hip measurement of 106 centimeters, which means that I want 54.5 centimeters. So 
So we're going to label that too. And then what you're doing is creating a rectangle out of those points. So we want to join up, we've got zero to two, we want to square down to point three, and we want to square across to point three. Um, and if you want to just double check your rectangle afterwards, 0 to 2 should measure exactly the same as 1 to 0.3. And likewise, 0 to 1 is exactly the same as 2 to 3. So if you want to check those, measure them and make sure that each corner is a right angle, you've got a really good foundation to start your skirt block with. You can now label your centre front and centre back lines. So the first one, 0 to 1, is your centre back, or CB. And your line 2 to 3 is your centre front, or CF. The top part is your waistline. And the bottom is the hem. So now we want to draw on the hip lines. These are structure lines, so you'll be doing this in pencil. It's a good idea to do it in faint pencil and then you can put your skirt shape on in a bolder pencil at the end and then it's really clear what you're going to be tracing off. So the two hip lines are the top hip line and the hip line. Your top hip line is your hip bone position down from your waist. So for this I'm using 10 centimetres. So you can mark in a couple of places where 10 centimetres hits. So I've marked my 10 centimetre point and then I'm going to draw that line in. Always right angle the line even if you know that you've measured because you'd be surprised. And you want to make sure that these are completely accurate. I tend to right angle in from both sides and then draw the middle bit. Obviously I've got spot and cross to help me. That is a straight line which makes me very happy. So this is your top hip line. Then your hip line is your fullest hip part. So uh, what I'm using here is 24 centimetres. So down from the waist I'm going to mark 24 centimetres just as I did before and draw in my hip line. This is different for everybody, so measure the fullest part on the person that you're making the skirt block for. If it's yourself, you know where your widest part is, measure that and measure down from the waist to see where that's located. That's my hip line. You can now label these four, five, six, and seven. So now we're going to mark our side seams in. To find your side seam, you need the measurement quarter of your fullest hip plus 1.5 centimetres or half an inch. And you want to mark that measurement from zero along the top line to mark 0.8. So I'm using 106 centimetre hip measurement. So my measurement is 28. So I mark 28 here. You can label that point 8. And then you can square down from 8 all the way to the hem. You can either measure from each point on the next line and then connect them all, or you can square it down and check the measurements after. It's up to you. So we can now mark 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20, 0.21, 0.22, 0.23, 0.24, 0.25, 0.26, 0.27, 0.28, 0.29, 0.30, 0.31, 0.32, 0.33, 0.34, 0.35, 0.36, 0.37, 0.38, 0.39, 0.40, 
and point 11. This is your side seam. So now we move on to the waistline. You've got your basic structure for the scaffolding of your skirt block and now we're going to start filling in some of the details. So we're going to mark along this line here and we're going to mark 0 to 12 measurement is your quarter waist plus 4.5 centimetres or 1 and 3 quarter inches. I'm using an 80 centimetre waist and so my measurement is 24 but use your own measurement for this. So we mark that and label it point 12. From point two, from the other side, we want to mark quarter of the waist plus 2.5. So my measurement will be 22.5 because I'm using an 80 centimetre waist. If you're going by inches, it is quarter of your waist plus one inch. And then you mark point 13. Square up from each of these points 1.5 or half an inch. So this is point 14, this is point 15, and you want to connect 0 to 14 with a straight line. And do the same thing from 2 to 15. Next we want to draw in the dart lines. So these are the lines on the back and on the front where our darts are going to be positioned. So for the back you want to find the middle point from 0 to 12. So my measurement was 24, so half of that is 12. Mark the halfway point. You can also measure the same amount in from each of the other lines. And then you want to connect them all up. All the way to the hem. This is your back dart line. Next, we want to put the front dart line on. So the front dart doesn't go in the middle. Um, I tend to put mine off to the side because the stomach happens in this area here um, and it gives better shaping if it sits off just to the side of the stomach. What you need to do is divide the line 2 to 13 into 3. So my line is 22.5. So my measurement is 7.5 um, and you want to measure from 13 inwards along that line one third. Then what we do is square the line all the way down to the hem. So you can measure again from these points inwards the same amount. So it will be two thirds, two thirds, two thirds. Or you can go right ahead and square it if you're confident to do so. This, you can label your front dart line. Here we can label point 16 and point 17. Now it's time to create the darts, which I'm going to do in a red pen so that you can see it more easily. We start with the back dart and what we want to do is measure 13 centimetres down from this point. Thirteen centimeters is about five inches, and we want to measure two centimeters either side, which is about three quarters of an inch. Now we join them up. The 
The front dart's a little bit different in that it's going to point slightly away from the centre. This is to allow room for the stomach, basically. Either side of point 17, we want to measure one centimetre, which is about three eighths of an inch. Next, what we're going to do is measure 10 centimetres down from point 17, which is four inches, and just mark a little point there. Now, our actual dart apex, so the point of our dart, is going to be one centimetre or three eighths of an inch back from the dart line. So you can draw a dot there at one centimetre, and then that's what you connect to your dart marks on the waistline. So that's our front dart shape. Now for drawing in the hip lines. So we need to connect 14 to 10 and 15 to 10. You'll do this with a faint pencil line. I'm going to do this with the green pen because after that we'll draw the hip curve. Right, so we've got our basic straight lines here. Now, everybody's different with their hip curves. When you're drawing your curve, assess your body shape. Are you curvier around the top hip area? Are you curvier around the thigh area? If you need a bit of help drawing your hip curve, um, what you can do is look at the relationship between your measurements. So if your top hip around 10 centimeters down from your waist, if that's a closer measurement to your waist, you're gonna want a higher curve. If your top hip and your low hip are closer, you're gonna want your curve to start a bit lower down. The aim of this is to get from here to here in a smooth shape, because at the moment, this is a very straight line and this is really pointy. We don't want a point here, we wanna smooth the line into it so that it's a nice gradual shape. It's not the end of the world if you don't get your curve 100% right, because when you come to fit the toile of this, the mock-up in Calico, you can pin out any excess fabric. The top hip measurement I'm using is bang in the middle of my waist and my hip. And so I'm gonna show you the traditional technique for drawing in your hip curve, which is to add half a centimeter inwards to the side seam line. That's two eighths of an inch. Do the same thing on the other side. And then the way to get from here to there is to connect your waist to your top hip with a straight line. You can do them one after the other in stages so that you get into the swing of it and you make a, you want the shape to be more or less symmetrical. And then on a pattern master, this curve here is quite a good hip shape. So you want to slide the pattern master until you find the right curve that goes from this straight line and curves gently into you're looking where it's going which is the side seam line here so what we don't want are any bumps so that i'm happy with that hip curve and then if you keep it where you drew the line flip it over you know exactly which point of the curve you used and you can replicate it on the other side Now it's time to curve the waist. So when you're sewing these together, this line is gonna be on the fold or with a seam, but either way it's gonna be stitched to itself or on the fold to itself. These two are gonna be stitched together. This is gonna to be stitched to this. These two are gonna be stitched together. And again, this is gonna be on the fold. And so what you want is for each of these points to be a right angle even if it's connected with a curve. So we're gonna curve the waistline so that it fits nicely, um, but we wanna make sure each of these points is a right angle. In order to do that, we need to make sure that the dart legs, these guys are the same length, otherwise it's not gonna work. So the way we do that is by truing. Starting with the back, we wanna fold the outermost dart leg and we're gonna fold this guy and take it into the inside leg. I don't know why they're called legs, it's a stupid name, but whatever, that's what they're called. So we get a really good fold. Don't try and skip a step by immediately taking it over, that won't work. You wanna get a really crisp fold line along your dart. Then when you've done that, 
put a finger on the apex of the dart and bring the paper over so I didn't fold that properly you get a better fold put your finger on the apex of the dart and bring it over and it should happily travel over to the other side then you take your pattern wheel and mark the side that looks happiest so if I was to continue this line it travels down into the waist here which is really ugly and it's not where my side seam point is what I want to do is continue this line and have that travel in a smooth curve round to the middle so I've wheeled the top line not the bottom line open that out and that's your dart shape same thing with the front we need to fold this outside line um, so not the leg that's nearest to your centre front it's the one that's nearest to the side seam get a really good fold all the way down to the apex put your finger on the apex and then bring the folded paper over to the other dart leg So you can see here, they're kind of the same length, but they're a bit pointy. So I'm just going to tracing wheel. I'm going to fill in the pointy bit, basically, and just um, turn that from a point into a nice gentle curve. I'll be drawing this in pen so you can see a bit better what I'm doing. Go round and you want all of your points to be right angles for about a centimetre or so. I'm going to do this in red. And then it will be super clear what I'm doing. So you can see here the tracing wheel line that I drew. Immediately after the line is a right angle. It won't stay a right angle for long, um, but that point needs to be because the two right angles together make a straight line, which is 180 degrees. So we are right angling the line for about a centimeter same thing with this point here same thing with point 15 these guys are both right angles and then finally point two needs to be a right angle now what you've ended up with is two lines that are kind of going to meet in a point same thing here they don't really agree with each other so what you need to do is connect them with a soft curve and we can do that with the pattern master that's a nice curve i can actually continue this because i drew it with a pattern wheel so i know my dart shape too these and these together with a soft curve and you might have to do two curves like come in from each side if you can't find one curve that suits both come in from each direction and meet in the middle so I'm happy with that and there we go Flip the pattern master around. It's a subtle change, but it makes a massive difference when it comes to having a level waistline. So we've got this little guy here. That's easy. And then this one, what we want to do is gradually just blend it into the waistline. Finish off, draw those dark shapes, and that's our skirt block drafted. When it comes to tracing this off, you're going to trace off the back, which is this line here, the dart 
here to the side seam, all the way down to the hem and across. You need to mark your hip line on to make sure that it is in line with your own hip line and parallel to the floor. And it's helpful to trace your dart line on as well because sometimes you might need to move that. For your front piece, you're tracing off this line and then we go up the waistline where the red pen is, down to the dart, up again, round, down the curve, all the way to the hem and then across. Again, you wanna mark your hip line on and you wanna mark your dart line on. So on the body, you need to make sure that your hip line is parallel to your waist, parallel to the ground. If you notice it's dropping at the front or the back, it means that uh, you need to make some adjustments to the balance of the garment. And with the dart line, it's helpful to have that on too, because this should be, the two the front dart lines should be parallel down the body. Don't forget to add seam allowances before you trace it onto calico. What I would suggest is keeping this hole, tracing it off onto pattern paper, adding your seam allowances, and then cutting that out in calico to make a twirl. My suggestions for seam allowances are 1.5 centimeters or half an inch for the center back and for both the side seams. I would leave the hem net, don't put anything, and I would leave the waist net because if you add seam allowance to the waist, number one, it's gonna sit in the wrong place on your body. Number two, because this is a curve and it's getting smaller, you might end up making it too tight. So I generally, for the toile in the fitting stage, I leave this raw and I just do a little edge stitch along it to make sure it doesn't stretch. And the center front piece, that's going to be on the fold. So your fabric will be folded, you'll place this to the fold line and then cut that out as one piece, but it'll be on the fold. There we have it, your finished skirt block. How's that? Hopefully not too painful. And now you've got your very own skirt block. So, like I said at the beginning of the video, there is a PDF booklet which you can request by clicking the link below. If you like this video, please give it a love heart. I absolutely love the love hearts. And um, if you want to subscribe to my channel, I'm going to be doing more videos. If there's any particular topic that you want covered to do with pattern cutting, then let me know in the comments as well. I would love to hear from you. Take care. Have a fab day. Bye.